Hello friends, welcome back to Sensory Seeds. Today's activities are all about what we can do with a paper plate. But these ideas are going to be out of the box ideas for what you can do with a paper plate. Paper plates are obviously fantastic for crafts. If you just Google paper paper hmm, paper plate crafts, you're going to get a million ideas. I actually have two in my videos already. We've got paper plate snake and paper plate balloon box. So go check those out. But there's always room for more, right? So let's hop out of that box. Let's get more creative and follow along for these three new ideas for paper plate fun. First up, paper plate memory. So grab a bunch of paper plates. We're gonna need a lot. I would say 12 to 16 and grab your markers. So you know the game memory, and that's where you take the pieces, you lay them all upside down, and then the kiddo has to turn over two at a time to see if they get a match. That's what we're gonna create with our paper plates. So I'm gonna start with my first design. And it could be something simple, just like a smiley face. smiley face. Now this needs to match my other plate. Okay, now that those two are done, we put them together and put them over to the side for safekeeping. And then we'll continue on with the rest of our paper plates. Again, picking up two and drawing the same thing on each one. Matchy matchy. So depending on the child's goals and the skills that they're working on, you can have them draw or write different things on here, being pre-writing strokes, more complex symbols, letters, numbers, and just make sure they make a matching, I can't pick that up, a matching symbol. So say I wanna do number 10. All I have to do is draw a number matching 10 onto this one. So I've done this with a kiddo um, over telehealth and he collected paper plates and he was actually sitting outside to create this. And then we were able to complete this big paper plate memory in his backyard and it was really fun. So I'm making a sun on this one. And if you're working on attention to detail with the kiddos, you can make sure that they have, you know, all six, yep, all six sun rays to match all six sun rays on this one and make sure they double check their work to make sure they're matching. So you can write words. If you're doing sight words with kiddos, you can write sight words on here and try to have them match them. Two trees. And you know, I just thought of another awesome idea. You could write Oh, you know what? I'm just going to do it on this one. So you could even write different movements on the plates. And then when the child finds the match, they have to complete the movement. Amazing. Okay, I've completed all of my plates and now it's time to get them in rows and play. All right, now that we have all of our designs on our paper plates, we need to take the plates, shuffle them up. Which actually is a total, <laughs> a total bilateral coordination skill in itself. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle them. Ugh. Okay. And now we've got to lay them out in two rows, just like the game memory. Now that you're all set up, it's time to play. So you have the child pick up two plates at a time, see if they're a match. If they're not, put them right back. They can take turns with the peer with uh, a parent, with a sibling, or they can just play themselves to see how many matches they can find. So that's how you play paper plate memory. Let's put that to the side and hop over to our next activity. All right, paper plate activity number 
two. This is an activity called paper plate points. So we're gonna get some paper plates, I would say five or six of them, and we're gonna write a number on each one. I'm gonna do numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, but you can play around with that. It can just be number one, two, three, four, five, depending on the child's age, um, depending on if they're interested in math and you wanna make it more of a mathematical task as they're adding up their points. And then we're gonna need some Bean bags, if you don't have bean bags, you can use stuffed animals for tossing, you can use rolled up socks, you can use toys, you can use balls. Plate number one, I'm gonna write 10 for 10 points. Plate number two, 20, and so on and so forth. All right, let's go play. So you can set them up in a row. You can set them up kind of staggered, scrambled. You can set them up right next to each other, depending on the child's level and what you're working on. And then go get your bean bags, your stuffed animals, your apples, whatever you want to use to throw. Quick tip, let's put a little tape on the back so when the bean bag or ball hits it, it won't bounce away and it stays a little more secure. Okay, you ready? Paper plate activity number three. Grab your plate, grab some string or thread, and a hole puncher. So we are going to start by taking our hole puncher and punch holes all around the circle. Um, we want the holes to be about an inch apart. Now, if the child has a hard time knowing how much space they should give, you can give some some visual cues for them. So simply draw out some dots like so and have them punch on those areas. So let's keep going, we'll go all the way around. Again, you can put about a, an inch. If you know this is gonna be a hard task for the child, just do four holes, just do six holes. So this is a fine motor task, of course, but it also incorporates using both hands, which we consider a bilateral coordination activity. And then once we bring in the string, it will be using those small little muscles in our hands to be doing lacing and stringing and get those fingers working. String-wise, I would say we want about four feet. So I'm gonna kind of measure that out with just my hand here. One, two, three, four. Snip that off. We want it to be about four feet long. And the first hole we want to tie a knot. So then our string will stay secure. Okay. We tie the knot, it's secure. We find the opposite end of our string. And we find a hole to start threading through. So we pull it all the way through. And this part is tricky for kids when they start because they think they just have to pull it through to where kind of their arm's length is, but then it will start to get bunchy. So remind them to pull it all the way through and then they can just pick holes at random to keep threading through. If you want this to be more of a eye scanning task, you can add letters next to the holes and then they, can have, they might have to find the letters in order of the alphabet, you can add numbers, you can add random letters and have them spell words. You can add shapes, you can add patterns. So there are so many ways to adapt this and make it harder or easier for your child. I am having a hard time doing two things at once, which is <laughs> talking and weaving. So I'm going to shush for a minute and just keep working on this. A lot of the time, 
kiddos who have fine motor difficulties have a hard time with that fine motor precision is what we call it. And so they may try to push through with their whole hand, they might try to push through with their thumb, but we want to start to teach them to have more refined movements with those fingers. So this task is fun and will promote that they have to pinch, pinch, pinch and pull it through. Their idea is you can tell the children that they can choose holes at random, but maybe they can't choose a hole right next to the one that they just did, or they have to do a hole that's at least two down, or they have to make sure their string touches at least every hole before the thread runs out. All right, and then once you're getting down to the end, you can just tie it off onto the back, or you can tape it down and check out your masterpiece. And then I did this one early. So we've got two. All right guys, thanks so much for watching all of my out of the box paper plate ideas. Get out there and try paper plate memory, paper plate points, and paper plate weaving. Tag Sensory Seeds, share this channel so others can learn, and subscribe below for more fun ideas that are yet to come.